that the South American Indians in the Andes were using a substance which they chewed or mm. uh, ingested, which gave them tremendous euphoria and energy. It was, came from the cocoa leaf. So he started his career as a wanderer by leaving Hannibal and going down to New Orleans where he planned to take a boat to Peru and bring back and market to the American public a substance that would pr produce euphoria and energy, which... Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> as Doc Hume says, there's a long tradition of um, um, neurochemistry that we are just beginning to... Uh, I like you in spite of the methods we've used to get there. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, I saw Tim uh, last year. I hadn't seen him for quite a while. We'd see each other often, and again, but it was often a little like we had no business with each other. But I really wanted to honor Timothy, and I w went up to his beautiful home in the Hollywood Hills with an absolutely exquisite wife, Barbara, and uh, son, Zach. And I brought fruit and wine and beautiful day and we sat outside in the sun. And there was a point, Tim and I exchange, you know, it's like uh, explorers meeting and where have you been and let me describe the terrain there. And, so. and then at one point in the living room, later in the evening, you and I were alone for a moment. I think Barbara was putting Zach to bed or something like that. And you, I said to you, Timothy, it's more beautiful than it's ever been before, and it's all so empty. And you said it is for me too. Remember that? And it was like at that moment we met in a space that we know each other so well that exists behind all of the Leary drama and the Alpert drama and all that stuff. It was just a flicker, and it was like a reassurance in a way. It's like grace for me. Isn't that, did you feel that when I... Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because as explorers go in these different directions, any paranoia you've got is going to you're going to feed upon it because the models are so disparate that I'll experience us as separate if I get caught in my model at all. And I keep getting caught, and so you became an object to me. Too bad about Tim. Got caught in materialism, wants to go into outer space, you know, like, what kind of crap is that, you know, the inner space, no, yeah. <laughs> should we play that? Which there, one should we uh, play? Should we do, we better do, we there, better be out of here in 45 minutes, by the way. We have to stop in 45 minutes, so the question thing, some point, whenever you want. There are tremendous differences there have, have been and always will be between us yeah. because we come from different um, different gene pools. We were exposed to different imprints as at least child. Yes, uh, at, at least. least. Yeah. And I'm uh, playing on the error variable uh, variance. Go ahead. <laughs> I honor these differences, uh, but there's a similarity that I find uh, not just in us, but in hundreds, thousands. And I may be Celtic exaggerating here, but I would say millions of uh, Americans that share our basic position, which is a, a discovery of, a resurrection of, uh, an acceptance of, an eventual occasional glorification of our singularity, mm. our uniqueness. A rarity as uh, highly special people. We're all that way. The way when I'd say it is the deeper I got, the deeper I could acknowledge that part of me which is one with everything. It just is. The deeper the faith, not belief, but faith, the more I could let myself into my humanity, into my uniqueness. And I've never been more fully unique than when I am least fully unique. I mean, I'm not, it's going from somebodyness to nobody specialness to uniqueness. You know, it's like a unique face of God of the formless. <laughs>